Hi, welcome to the Ballpark Hunter podcast. I'm your host, Mark Fiquez, and with me today is the shortstop for the Weimer Hormigas, Anthony Ward. Anthony, welcome to the show. Thank you, brother. Great, great to be here. Great to be here as well. This is uh, a little over two weeks ago. I should set this up for the listeners. I was driving my cousin's car between Houston and Austin. And I, I said, you know what? I'm going to stop in this town of Weimar. It's right off I-10, south of Austin. And I'm going to check out this ballpark. And I'm going to see if uh, the team's practicing. Maybe I can get in and take some videos. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, the baseball team was showing up. And I was like, excellent. And I remember, I think I went up to you and I said, how do I pronounce the name of this town? And you're like, Weimar Hormigas. And yes, sir. Right from there, you guys welcomed me in. You didn't care if I was taking photos or pictures. That doesn't happen every day, but some of us ballpark travelers, ballpark hunters like to do that. So I spent about an hour at the ballpark walking around, talking to people, getting to know the players, the coaches. I had a blast, and that led to setting up an interview. So uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you for welcoming me into your home ballpark and what have they well how are things been going since those two weeks with the team winning positions things like that man it was honestly it was a pleasure having you um thank you for coming to visit for yeah. first and foremost uh we definitely appreciate it um but the season's been going up and down we we've been fighting like crazy um still trying to get our pitching going um but the wins have come. A lot of losses have come too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the dudes fight every single day, all nine innings. Um, it's always a great game because we go down to the last inning. Uh, but as far as playing wise, we've just we've been giving it our our all, man. And and a lot of us are just grateful for the opportunity. So every time we get in that bat, we take it like it's our last. Yeah, so you would say your your team's a little bit of a scrappy bunch. You know, it's like, hey, you may beat us, but you're going to go down with a fight. Absolutely. So, I mean, <laughs> nobody's going to come in and roll over us. Uh, okay. They're not just going to have a free win. Uh, just like Roswell tried to take the day off, we gave them a, a L in their loss column. Nice. They decided to sat, sit, sit for their starters, which was kind of disrespectful on that part. But we didn't we didn't know nothing of it until after the game when one of the old guys from Houston came and told us, like, hey, they were trying to take you guys lightly. So it, it, it just – it seems like a lot of dudes are going to take us lightly because – we are a scrappy bunch. We don't have the home run numbers. We put up singles. We walk. We steal bases. We just make a lot of stuff happen on the base pass, a lot of mayhem. And uh, we're, we're really fast guys. That's what we do. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of Weimer, this team was put together very quickly. This didn't. This is a new franchise in 2022. Uh, do most of the players have Pecos League experience or do you have fresh face rookies on the team? Um, majority of the team is rookies. Uh, there's, I believe, three of us on the team that have played in the Pecos before. And then there's just other guys that are veterans because of their age. Mm-hmm. But as far as playing in the league, I believe that majority of us have not done it before. Um, I have. I've, I've played in 18 and 19. Um, so in 18, I played for the Ruidoso Osos, which was a travel team. We didn't have a home stadium. And then in 2019, I played for the High Desert Yardbirds, which mm-hmm. We were in first place the whole year. We did. We came up short in the playoffs, but it was a lot of fun. A lot yeah, of fun. You, yeah, you batted 299 that year with uh, 37 stolen bases, 30 RBIs, and uh, had, a, had a fine year. Now, going back to high desert, was that, uh, was that the year they were having issues with the stadiums? You guys had to play in another location? Yeah, so um, – we started out the year in Adelanto and uh, a really right. nice ballpark. And uh, they sold, I guess they sold it to a soccer league and they transformed the whole stadium into a soccer field. So they didn't have any dirt on the field at all. We had a portable mound, which is really weird. And then um, after the All-Star, I mean, after the, the 4th of July game, for some reason, I guess the, the owner of the stadium and the owner of the league had a little dispute and they cut off the stadium to make us a travel team again, which was very unfortunate because yeah. California you know, the gas prices are not not uh oh, they've always been high <laughs> exactly so <laughs> they're not friendly so it, it's been a grind um but yeah we definitely had tr- trouble with the stadiums but they um they partnered us with Bakersfield that year so we just kept 
really going back to Bakersfield to have our home games. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Cause I, I remember hearing about that story. It's like, Oh, that's too bad. That was a former uh, California league stadium. But yeah. uh, I, I got to tell you Weimer, you know, if the people who are listening to this podcast, the, the millions, the thousands, the hundreds, <laughs> the fifties, yes, uh, Weimer is this classic post war uh, venue built in 1947, I believe. It is in pristine condition. It doesn't look like right. it has changed much in seven, almost 75 years. It's, uh, it's just one of those buildings you're like, wow, this still exists. And they still play baseball here. And there's, there's history and there's a, a veterans uh, monument, uh, I think, near the entrance that uh, is just tastefully done. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and there's concessions, and they have, you know, they sell beer at the game. That doesn't happen in some of the Pecos League stadiums. So what's it? what has attendance been like? Has the city gravitated to you guys yet? Are they paying attention? Um, in, our, in the beginning, yeah. And then after, after our little road trip, we weren't around for a long time, so it's kind of hard to get them back. But we're actually having a home stint coming up now, so we, we we're hoping for a great attendance there. The four games we played, I believe there's been pretty great attendance. Uh, and the guys and ladies who come out are very, um, what's the word, in, into, into the game, uh, very loud. They got our backs. Like, it's, it's a beautiful thing when they show up. So not a, there's not a lot, but the quality of fans that come mm -hmm. is a beautiful thing. Yeah, that, that's, good to, that, that's yeah, good to hear. Yeah, they have a lot of kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, you know, I'm looking at this stadium and, you know, I'm, I'm part of a, a group of niche people that just take ballpark tours. We don't care what the stadium looks like. We just want to see it. And I mean, yeah. Weimer is so close off the inter, uh, interstate. I mean, it's not like you have to drive an hour and a half through the hills of Texas to get there. Right. right? It's in between Houston, uh, San Antonio, and then you have uh, Austin to the north. So it's very easy to get to. And I'm really hoping that folks who are listening to this say, Hey, you know what, when I'm in Texas, I'm going to check out a game in Weimar. Cause uh, it, it's a, just a historic field. They have uh, their advertisements are hand painted on the wood in the outfield. Mm -hmm. So it yeah, gives beautiful. it this, gives it this like league of their own feel. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's just, I was shocked about how nice it was. Cause I had, I had went up to Austin to see their ballpark, the weirdos. Yeah. And I wrote a review about that. You could check that out on stadium journey. I also have my video up on ballpark Hunter on, on YouTube and you could just see that for yourself, but this is a stadium. It was actually an emotion picture called everybody wants some. It was uh, used oh, as wow. a big, yeah, I didn't know that I was doing some research and, and you find out things. So everybody yeah, wants, yeah, it's, it, if you, uh, it, it's about a small college baseball team. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see the stadium and it's, I think it's called tech Southern Texas state. It, it has a, a different name to it. So that's beautiful. It's, yeah. It's, it's not a huge movie. Somebody told me it's like dazed and confused, but takes place wow. in the eighties. So, you know, okay. that's, uh, <laughs> that's something you can tell the guys about and, and find that somewhere on, on uh, streaming, but, uh, but cool. yeah, let's, let's get back to you a little bit. So, your goal is to make it to affiliated baseball one day, correct? Absolutely. And how long do you see yourself? How long are you going to give yourself time before you get noticed? I mean, a, I got an opportunity coming up um, actually very soon. Uh, I'm going to the MLB draft league that's ran by nice. the CBR. And um, I'm reporting there on July 19th. So that opportunity is, is the biggest one I've got so far. It's definitely the closest thing to affiliated ball. Um, mm -hmm. They're, they're actually, it's actually the MLB running it. So yeah. it's, it's the closest thing I'll get. And I'm definitely ready to take advantage of it. Um, but if that doesn't work out, I mean, I'm going to keep going into the wheels fall off. There you go. Yes, sir. There you so, go. That's, that's, I talked to a lot of guys. That's, they say the same thing. Just keep doing it until my body can't take it anymore. Or, exactly. or, or until you meet that certain someone that tells you. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's call it. It's, it's ready. Yeah, it's it's ready. Let's call it a career. But uh, that's like me. I pl I've been playing adult kickball for about 16 years, and I'm going to be 50 in a few years. And the wife's hey, always that's... asking me, when are you going to stop? When are you going to stop? When I can't play anymore. When I can't. Absolutely. And, and I used to play about three, four times a week. So 
I was playing more games than LeBron James playing basketball <laughs> one time. <laughs> so yeah, so it was that. so it was tough. So uh, you know, folks that don't know a little bit of, don't know too much about the Pecos League, or or they know from some stories. Uh, how would you describe the life of a minor league ball player in the Pecos League? The oh, the man. travels, the stadiums, the ups and downs. Yeah, it's a it's a grind. Um, so we don't get paid, as most people know, but oh, yeah. we we're doing it for the love of the game. Um, the the stadiums you go to, you they're hit or miss. Majority of them are really nice, but as you know, Austin is is one of those ones that is definitely a miss. Um, the the quality of play is really good. The pitching, if for a position player facing this pitching, it's it's really good, really well to prepare yourself to go to the next level because you're going to see low nines, high eights, and then you get those weird lefties that are low eights but have filthy filthy movement. Um, Playing here in Weimar is it's a blessing because, like you said, it's in the middle of nowhere. So you, we weren't thinking much of it, but the stadium itself is gorgeous. Yeah, the infield is amazing. The grass is always cut to the perfect length. It seems like, um, but like going to Garden City and playing on an all turf field in front of those fans out there, they have a, a solid seven hundred to a thousand people that come out when we play them. So. Wow. It gives you that real pro experience feel. And um, it's it's just playing the Pecos is definitely it's definitely a, a blessing, but it's a grind. It's it's a grind. It it takes a toll on your body for sure. You get we total, I think we've had three off days since we started. So you're gonna play every single day. Um, which is I mean, to me it's it's a beautiful thing. I love it. I'm yeah, you have I'm to. all for it. Yes, absolutely. So I, I mean, you hear complaining, but at the same time, there's not much to complain about while you're you're playing pro ball. So it's it's I can't, I can't even put it into words. It's a blessing to me. Yeah, no, it's it's something that you tell yourself. You know what? I may not be able to do this a few years from now. So let me just try to push for that dream because when it's over, you can say, "Hey, I I attempted." Absolutely. And, uh, you know, if, and and with the going back to the MIB draft. Is that you're showcasing your talent or are you look or, or are you going to be assigned to a team? How did that work? So so the way that it is, um, from my understanding, is that it's going to be six weeks of you on a team mm. in front of MLB scouts and MLB coaches um, that are going to be your coach. So we'll be we'll have like a hitting coach from a certain organization and a pitching coach from a different organization. Okay. Um, and we're going to. And there's, I believe it's six teams and yeah, um, they're, yeah. based, they're based out of the East Coast. So it's going to be in Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, I mean, Trent, uh, Trenton, New yeah, Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So they're going to put you on a team, but you just don't know yes, what team yet. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, if you get to Trenton, New Jersey, I grew up about an hour north of Trenton. That used to be the double A, double a home of the Yankees. Oh, wow. And uh, I know they were a little upset that they got dumped by the Yankees in Major League Baseball, but uh, oh, it's uh, yeah, uh, yeah, if yeah, for those of you who don't know the MLB Draft League, it's uh, the Fredericton Keys, Mahoney Valley Scrappers, State College Spikes, Trenton, West Virginia Black Bears, Williamsport Crosscutters. Some great, they're all great ballparks, great little cities. But if you get to Trenton, and if you happen to play for Trenton. Mm-hmm. Get yourself a pork roll, egg, and cheese sandwich. They serve them at the ballpark. Are they amazing? They're they amazing. they're amazing. It's pork roll is made is invented in Trenton. If okay. you're from New Jersey, especially that part of the state, you call them pork roll. Pork if you roll. if you go up north towards New York City, you call it Taylor ham. Don't get involved. Just call it pork roll. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Those I'm are definitely have to get out and try. Those amazing. are fighting words. So, so, and, and who knows? Maybe you play for another team, but if you play in Trenton, get yourself a pork roll, egg, and cheese. Uh, talk to their GM. He's been on this show, and uh, you'll love it. Just get a pork roll, egg, and cheese on a Kaiser bun. Don't get it on a hot dog. Don't get it in some kind of uh, chili bowl. Just get it because the the ballpark <laughs> does some crazy stuff to it. Just the okay. basics. And, yes, sir. Uh, You'll, you'll love it. You'll love it. It'd be, it'd be one of the greatest things you eat. Uh, you may have to do some uh, little extra, little extra ellipticals the next day. Cause it's, 
not the best food for you, especially when you're trying to play some baseball, but uh, yeah, that that's great. So, so yeah, pork roll and, and you know, you okay. can look it up. It's uh, it's a New Jersey delicacy because you're not from New Jersey. <laughs> you're from uh, where are you from originally? California. Fresno, Calif- California. Fre- that's right. Fresno, California. So you, that, yes, nobody knows what the heck that is out there. So no, uh, be, so. <laughs> definitely never heard of it. No, no. So, okay. So you went to college at Southwest Christian mm-hmm. and then yes, you sir. got into the Pecos league soon after, uh, how long have you been playing baseball? When did you first pick up a bat and ball? When I was four years old. So that was yeah. 22 years ago, 22 years ago. I've been playing. <laughs> that was 2000. Yes, sir. <laughs> which I, which I remember. That. Yeah, of course. I think I was, uh, I think 20 years earlier, I was picking up a bat and ball as well in 19, oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe 1981, but it's, uh, I, I never made it. I never made it. So, so you picked that up and when did you realize, Hey, I want to play college ball. I want to play professional baseball at some level. Um, in high school, actually, when, yeah. uh, I was playing football and, um, I had to decide whether I was going to take football serious or baseball. Serious. Mm. And so, um, I had already got a few all-star like um, achievements done while I was in little league and coming up. So I felt like my best route was in baseball. And then I heard about the money that was in baseball. So I definitely wanted to go that route Um, and the longevity of baseball Mm -hmm. and compared to football and especially being a running back, seeing how their lifespan in the NFL was six years. I'm not a big guy, so it probably wasn't going to be that long. So I definitely, decided right then and there that MLB was going to be my route to try yeah. and get to. Yeah. He definitely takes some uh, bumps and bruises in football, but it's uh, no, I don't blame uh, you. Cause I think by 30 years old, it's like, it's a career. Yeah. absolutely. And then, and then with baseball, I mean, heck you can still play well into your 40s, especially if you're a pitcher. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. It's, you just got to take care of that body. You just got to take you, care of that arm. No, you definitely will. And then, uh, okay, so you come out of uh, college. Were you looking to get drafted? Were you looking like what? What was your goal? Was the Pecos League something you was on your radar, or did that just just happen to come up based on uh, just researching? Like, what what did you want to do after you graduated? You said, "Hey, I want to play baseball, but where do I go?" Yeah, so I definitely, I definitely wanted to get drafted, um, but being at an NAI, it was mm-hmm. it was really tough because a lot of guys go to NAI route, but get overlooked um, just because there's D1, D2s, D3s, um, all kinds of other schools that get prospects going there. And uh, being a small NAI, it was really tough. But my coach knew, um, my coach knew the, the coach of uh, the high, I mean, the Rio Dosa Osos, Sean oh, McNeil. Nice. So he kind of got that little plug in from years before. Uh, but he had sent me to a tryout for the New York Boulders. And um, when I oh, went yeah. out there, uh, <laughs> I did really well. I went into the manager's office. It seemed like he was going to pick me up. Uh, he said he was going to either, he was going to give me a call, whether it be two days, two weeks, two months, or two years from then, but still waiting on that phone call. Never received it. Really? Uh, oh. oh yeah. So it, it, it was just a little runaround going out there. And then um, I headed down to, to Ruidoso and, and Sean welcomed me with open arms. But Honestly, I never heard of the Pecos League before then. Like, I didn't know about independent baseball. I, I only thought that there was affiliated baseball oh, wow. where it was – yeah, it was it was really weird finding out that there was so many leagues because there are. They're, they're not advertised to, to the guys that are in college, it seems like. Um, it just seems like it's MLB or bust. So, finding out that there was all these independent leagues was, was – honestly, it was a little bit overwhelming because I didn't – know which one to try to get yeah. to or like yeah. not knowing who the Rockland Boulders were, but going out there to try out for them uh, and then finding out that they were in this league called the Can-Am. It just kind of opened my eyes to, to realize that there was way more opportunities than I knew. Yeah. That, you know, that, that's amazing that you say that because you would think that these independent leagues are trying to make sure that everybody knows who they are. And, and for somebody right. of your age, not to know who uh, some of these independent leagues are, it's, it's, it's a little shocking. I right. wonder, I wonder how many other players feel that way. Cause you know, it was in uh, I think 1993 was like that first year of these independent leagues, uh, which the mm-hmm. Can-Am league now is part of the frontier league. They merged Absolutely. And growing up in New Jersey. I remember going to New Jersey Jackals games. I've been to a boulders game back when they were called the Rockland boulders, but yeah. you know, uh, I, I talked to a lot of uh, individuals from all over the baseball world and, you know, 
you know, you, you got to look for talent. So why not get yourself out there and say, Hey, if you play for a small division two or division one school, you know, come take a look at us. But Absolutely. Uh, so you're still especially, waiting. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, especially for the NAI guys, yeah. like they are, they're the, it seems like they're the most overlooked because there's so many of those colleges that it's, it's hard to get and pick and choose from them. And it, there's so much talent that goes yep. there just because, you know, guys don't make grades or guys have some kind of history to where they don't make it to the NCAA. So they just get pushed down to this NAI school and they have D1 talent, but no one knows about them because they're at this little school in the middle of nowhere or it's 500 people that go to the school. So you don't really know about those kind of guys. So them going to these independent leagues would be beautiful for them because they, they'll start to get their, their name out there and the recognition coming in. So I would, I don't know why we don't get to, 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 I don't know why there's not as much advertisement for it as there is the MLB because there's just as much opportunity in both leagues. Oh yeah. Cause you have the, you American, the money. Yeah. yeah, no, no, it's, it's absolutely right. And you guys, you know, you guys are looking to, to make it to the next level. So there's the American association, there's the, mm-hmm. the frontier league, the Atlantic league, yeah, uh, of course, the, the Pecos League, the Pioneer mm-hmm. League, uh, and, then, and then, of course, you know, you have a lot of summer collegiate leagues for those guys who are looking to get some attention, like the Appalachian League is now, exactly. you know, and then I'm, like I'm the sure, Northwood. yeah, the North, kind of and, and those are all great places to play the Prospect League, and, you know, I, mm-hmm. I try to showcase them all on my channel and let people know that, you know, you can go there and have a great time, you're also mm-hmm. spending less money than like I, I went to a Houston Astros game when I was out there. I think it was like fourteen dollars for a beer. I was shocked. Oh no! <laughs> not not that I was shocked, but like yeah. fourteen bucks. And then I go to the White Sox game. They're charging twelve fifty, and oh, you're just like, I, yeah, and I man. think I think beers at your ballpark was th- were three bucks or three bucks. Yeah. And, and then you got dollar, dollar, dollar thirsty Thursdays where they're dollars. So it's, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Thirsty. Th- and then you have this water ice, which uh, have, have some weird flavors like pickle juice flavor. <laughs> like if you, if yeah. you go, if you go to the ballpark, it has this wonderfully, beautifully painted menu. Yeah. It just, it looks so appeasing and all the prices are the right prices. You feel like you're, you're back in the 1980s uh, watching yeah. baseball with those prices. So it's, uh, Man. It's, the owners of that stadium take very, very good care, and they take time to, to make yeah. sure that it's a it's it's appealing to the eye. They definitely take their time on, it and they do a great job. No, no, they actually do. So uh, now, another thing I was told you're called the you're called the Ant. That's your nickname. <laughs> yeah. Wh- wh- and then you play for the Hormigas, which, if you don't speak Spanish, is Ant in Spanish. Yeah. So it feels very <laughs> befitting. How did you get that? I don't have a nickname. So how did you get the nickname Ant and, and did you like it at first? Did Honestly, it? it just uh it came up when I was in when I was little. When I everybody instead of calling me Anthony, I think it's just too many syllables. They just yes, said Ant. Ant. Yeah. Yeah. So ever since then it just stuck and came out here and everybody called me the same thing. Like I never tell people like my name's Ant, but oh they just instead yeah. of saying Anthony, they just say Ant. So it just I don't know, it's God's plan. He he put me here. And yes. we just got put into the Ormigas, which just so happened to be my name too. So it's mm-hmm. it's been it's been really crazy this year. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. So uh, so far, uh, or or any time during your Pecos League experience, what what have you know? Like we always hear some crazy stories from minor league baseball on the road. Uh, is there one story in particular that, that you tell people when they bring up this question? Like, what was what was an odd time? What was like the weirdest thing you see? Maybe it was something at a ballpark. Maybe it was something on the road. The weirdest thing I saw was definitely uh, uh, a dispensary expo on my baseball field in Adelanto. So they had a whole bunch of weed dispensaries, marijuana really? dispensaries. On the baseball come field. Come out and put an expo. Yes. Just, nice. I mean, there was hundreds of tents out there. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen it. And it was just all over the field. The the the, the stadium smelled like absolute. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, it smelled like my, my brother's <laughs> room in high school. I know that smell. <laughs> yeah, well. so that was definitely the craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, on a on and it was on our field, like it wow. was at our home stadium. And it did was, they it was did really they clean crazy. did they clean up before the game or did they not? Oh realize? yeah, they definitely okay. They definitely cleaned it up, but there was definitely some uh, we're def- some some Swisher wrappers, some backwood yeah. wrappers, 
floating in the outfield. So oh, goodness gracious. It was, it was crazy. But that, I mean, it, it was a beautiful sight, but it definitely was crazy. Oh my goodness. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I don't think I've had that. I've seen some crazy stuff too. Cause you know, getting back to, you're still waiting for your call from rock, uh, the New York boulders. I remember out of college, I interviewed for a bunch of minor league baseball teams, independent, you know, uh, indoor football teams. I'm mm-hmm. still waiting for some calls myself. So. <laughs> I heard and, that. And, and the Florence freedom, definitely waiting mm-hmm. for your call. It's been almost <laughs> 20 years, 2003. I was fresh out of college and it's uh, haven't heard from you guys yet. So, and you're still playing. Well, you're the Florence y'alls now. So maybe, maybe you have oh, yeah. disowned well, that. It's which, coming. Yeah, it's coming. it's coming. I would love to work for the Florence y'alls. I, I love their logo and, and Jersey and, and just in case you want to know what a y'all is, uh, there's a water tower that's on the interstate that says Florence y'all. And oh, wow. init- initially was going to initially said Florence Mall, but <laughs> I guess the U.S. Interstate Committee said, "Hey, you can't advertise the mall, so change it or get rid of it." So the mayor said, "Okay, let's just change the M to a Y. Let's paint over it and <laughs> no say way. Florence y'all." And it's been like that for forty some years. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, crazy. So whenever you go through Florence, it's a, it's like. It's in northern Kentucky. It's pretty much it's a suburb of Cincinnati. And you see this candy striped tower that says Florence Y'all. And you're like, okay, that's kind of cool. And then it's just taken on a life of its own. So Yeah. Uh, my buddy, my buddy Derek Reddy played for the for the Florence Y'all. And their nice. stadium looks beautiful. It is nice. That's a nice stadium. And they do cool things too, like bourbon sampling night. Oh wow. And uh yeah, it was one of the first stadiums I saw those uh the beer cups that fill up from the, the bottom. Uh, they have a they have a great they they bring out like some kids splash uh like inflatable rides that or or water slides and whatnot for the kids on certain days so that's they, really nice they do a nice job you know unfortunately cincinnati you know got the reds up the road but you know they, they all they do all the promotions thirsty thursdays they have great logos they have a mascot that runs around and entertains people it's i think it's free parking there i don't think they charge so oh wow like yeah, I said, really a lot of these independent clubs do a do a wonderful job and they were built, you know, to make sure that people were comfortable there. Whereas like the Pecos League, some of these these stadiums are a little bit rustic and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and yeah. old. And I, how many I mean, you probably have seen all of them, you know, even like the ones out in California. Uh, yes. So there's some new teams out there that I haven't seen yet, like the Santa Rosa team. I've never been there. The Santa, Santa Ana Rosa. team. I've never been there. Or yeah. the Martinez team. So well, yeah, yeah. Sometimes with Andrew, it's like I look at the ballpark and I'm like, okay, where are you putting a team? You know, this, <laughs> is, this is a little interesting. But I, I don't know if you told me uh, the Austin team was supposed to play. Some, were you the one who told me about Downsfield in Austin? No, no. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that was an old Negro League stadium that uh, would have been dope. Was has been renovated. It's beautiful. I, I, I made a visit there. And it's a, you know, it's a ballpark. I think that was built in the early fifties. Oh, wow. And it's, they, you know, some great hall of famers have played there. Like, uh, you know, Satchel Paige, there's a, uh, there's a, a photo of him outside of the stadium uh, wow. and, and some other legends, hall of famers. And like, if they were able to play there, the Austin weirdos, I mean, that would have been a marquee attraction, but you know, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what happened. I mean, I can't say that they were supposed to play there, but somebody told me that maybe it was, Maybe it was another. Visit. It might have been Skip. It might have been John. Okay, but Maybe. that that would have been beautiful because yeah. the stadium they got right now is atrocious. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. It's 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 got off. I, I think they know that, and uh, I mean, who? There's no food there. They do give you beer if you donate some money to the team. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and being you're the visitor at the ballpark, they have that tree where you sit on for. Uh, yeah. Which. Yeah. Which is nice and shaded, but yeah, it's it's probably one <laughs> of the more in, like if somebody says, "Mark, what's the worst professional ballpark you've been to?" I, I would have to say it's Parca Parque Zaragoza. However, it's yeah. in a ridiculously awesome neighborhood with some, some absolutely great, some great taco places and those typical yeah. Austin outside patios with the mist and the margaritas yeah. and the machine. And world. they have this family that sits out on their front porch that watches every game that we played so far. They, 
it just is a great vibe that they have yeah. around it. No, it's a great vibe. See, my, my thing is, and I would love to get the, the folks of the weirdos on here. I would say, you know, if you're going to play there, just make this just such a bizarre experience, you know, like bring out yeah. a grill, cook hot dogs and burgers, you know, just say, Hey, just donate money. Every time you buy something, you know, yeah. uh, if, you, if you want, if you want to get the people that watch the game from outside the porch, you know, make, make some kind of deal with them mm -hmm. where, you know, they're doing a cheering section or, or they're playing music or something, you know, just yeah. make it to like, Hey, you got to come out here. It's just such a bizarre ballpark because yeah. like everything in Austin is, is just expensive. I'm shocked on how much <laughs> it, it is to go out to get a taco and a, a beer out there, you know, and, and you guys can say, Hey, let's make this kind of like a fun little cheap place. Uh, yeah, that, that, that would be great. It doesn't burn your wallet. So, all right. Well, Anthony, we're about to wrap things up. Uh, you said you're going to be reporting to the MLB draft. When does that take place? When do you, uh, July 19th. Okay. So you got some time before you do that here and uh when's your uh your next game uh today actually today? All we right. start at 6 30 tonight all right and uh well i think by the time people listen to this that game will be passed but uh <laughs> well what, hopefully what, there's a win <laughs> yeah hopefully so, so so before we go what can you tell people about the pecos league about weimer about the ballpark just just uh, sell it sell it to the the media sell it to the fans yeah. So for the Pecos League, if you want to get your name out, um, if you want to be on Baseball Reference and actually have your name out there for a professional experience that's actually linked to professionalism, uh, the Pecos League is the way to go. Um, they definitely have some great competition, great fields. Of course, you're going to run into one or two that's horrible. I'm not going to lie to you, but the rest of them are really great. Um, they have a lot of fans that come out to support. Um, Weimer, it's it's a beautiful place. It is. Uh, we're still trying to win the support from them. Uh, we're like he's like like my man Mark said, we're fairly new, um, but we're 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 definitely trying to grab the the attention of the fans out there. Uh, the ballpark is amazing. Um, playing in the ballpark is a different kind of feel. Um, even Alpine has a Negro League field, which is a beautiful spot, beautiful stadium. It's a really small town, but the the stadium is a blessing to play in. Um, if you can get your name into the Pecos League, I would definitely do it. Uh, if you're fans, I would definitely go check out the games. They're going to be entertaining. Um, you might see a couple errors here and there, but the the level of play and just the 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 attitudes of the players, <clears throat> excuse me, are going to be something that you would definitely want to witness. Um, it's it's a grind, so the guys are going to give you a show. Uh, they definitely aren't going to take anything for granted. Um, if you if you haven't been to a ballpark or a stadium and seen this kind of play, I would definitely recommend it because, like I said, everybody's going to give you everything they got. And and seeing that, seeing the passion, it's definitely inspiring. So if you're a fan, I would definitely go watch. But if you're a ball player and you don't have any other opportunities, um, the Pecos League is definitely one to go and, and step into and get your name out there. Put up numbers and you'll definitely get a call. All right. Well, Anthony, I appreciate your time. Uh, we Thank know you're you for having me. We're very busy. I think you guys had a six hour ride from Alpine the other day. Was that correct? Actually, it was a, a 12 hour drive from New Mexico. Oh, goodness. 12 hours. Is that your longest drive? Yeah, that okay. definitely was from Santa Fe. And is that, does everybody get into like one large van or bus or is it separate cars heading out there? No, you definitely try to carpool with as many yeah. people as you can. But uh, wow. we don't have a van. Nah, we're not out. <laughs> they no. give us. Oh, yeah. Well, you know <laughs> what? I, I worked for a soccer team years ago. We had a, a van. It was, like, it was like a church. It used to be, if, if you looked at the side of it, it said like First Baptist Church of Birmingham. <laughs> and we took, we took that from Cincinnati to Minnesota for Ooh. a game. And that's about a good, like that. That's a good 12, 13 hour drive. And then they took it out to Milwaukee after the thing broke down. <laughs> It just, it was not meant to drive that far for so long. So yeah, sometimes it's good just to hop in the car, but whoo, I, 12 hours and gas is about 450. Oh, I, I hear you. I hear you. So yeah, that's, you guys are doing this for the love. We appreciate it. And uh, if you haven't been to Weimar or if you are in Weimar listening to this, head out to a game, go cheer these guys on and, and grab a hat. These hats are beautiful. Look at that. Perfect for the summer heat. I mean, these are, I mean, this hat is very breathable. So, 
All right, Anthony, best of luck this year. Best of luck in your future. Definitely going to be keeping an eye on you to see what happens in the MLB draft. And uh, hopefully. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. No problem. Thank you for the hospitality and uh, best of luck to you and the rest of the team. Thank you, brother. Have a great day. You too. Take care. All right, that was Anthony Ward, the ant, and he is the shortstop for your Weimer Hormigas. And I got to say, you know, it's one thing to call somebody up and say, hey, I want to get you on my podcast, and I've never met you before. I've never been to your ballpark. It's another thing to go to the ballpark and talk to these gentlemen and say, hey, can you come on my podcast? You know, you have kind of that connection with them. And, and I never thought that I would able be able to get pork roll into a conversation about a Pecos League team, but I did it. I did it, Dan. I did it. I told you I'd do it. So uh, that was uh, Anthony Ward, who, uh, my goodness, you know, when, when you start uh, t- talking about how old somebody was in 2000, I mean, he was ooh, four years old, and I'm about 24 years old at, in 2000. You realize how old you are, but good, good luck to him. You know, he's not the first to say, I'm going to play until the wheels come off. And I, I hope he I hope he makes it to where where he wants to go. And uh, we'll be t- I'll be paying attention to the, to the MLB draft. I hope to see him on uh, one of those six clubs. Hopefully Trenton, the Trenton Thunder. That's uh, that's the team, kind of the team I grew up with. So anyway, uh, I figured we'll talk a little bit about the ballpark. The official name is Veterans Memorial Stadium at Strickland Field. It's got one of those long names, but this is a gorgeous ballpark. I mean, you show up to it and it just gives you that, like, like I said, 1950s, 1960s ballpark feel. If somebody was doing like a league of their own type of uh, filming, you would choose that. If you were doing a ballpark from, from, I guess, any era, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, that would be a nice ballpark to use. And it's a lot of history there. You know, a lot of great high school, a lot of great Babe Ruth World Series uh, were held there. I tried to do some little more research on the ballpark, and unfortunately, I can't find as much as I thought I would find. Uh, you know, that's how some ballparks are. You know, like just for example, Smokey Joe Williams Field in Seguin, Texas. Nobody knows when that was built. Nobody has told me from the Parks and Recreation Department what year that stadium was built. I think it goes back to at least 1960. But there's um, that's it. I, I can't tell you when it was built, uh, if it was built prior to that. But Weimer was uh, 1947, I believe. And it is one of those classic... <coughs> Those classic uh, post World War II ballparks. Actually, 1948 uh, was the w- was when it was built, and it was the first lighted baseball field between San Antonio and Houston. And despite its age, remains a state of the art stadium. Uh, that is from the Victoria, Texas Advocate newspaper. They said that uh, several years ago. But it, no, it's a beautiful stadium. And you know, one thing about the Pecos League, and I know we got on a little bit about Austin, but I think the guys at Austin realize that hey, we do kind of have a weird ballpark, and uh, we're just going to have to own up to it. And I'd be more than happy to give them some pointers if they ever want to come on a podcast with me. And, and I'm not going to you know be mean about it. I'll just say hey, you know what? Let's 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 just say hey, this is our ballpark. Let's go with it. You know, Strickland Field at Veterans Memorial Park in Weimar has concessions it has bathrooms it has a covered grandstand it has a press box it has lights it has a scoreboard it has advertisements it's it has plenty of free parking it's got cheap concessions i mean it's it's a cool place it's such an awesome place and you don't know about these ballparks until you start looking things up and you talk to people just like I guess it was Skip. Skip told me about uh, Downsfield and Austin to visit. And uh, that is a beautiful ballpark. So, you know, guys, I, I know some people may think the Pecos League is something. But these guys are playing for the love. These guys are playing to get notice. That's what they're doing at all levels of baseball. Uh, when you got a ballpark like Veterans Memorial Park, go out there and watch this team. I mean, you know, go on a thirsty Thursday. I mean, you're going to have a good time. I mean, I don't know what, what there is to do in Weimar, but 
you know, if you can just spend the night there, go to San Antonio, see the missions the next day, or go towards Houston, see the Astros or the Space Cowboys, or, or you know, head up north and, and seeing uh, games in Austin. Check out this place. I, you're going to love it. It's just such an awesome place to see. And the Hormigas logo, grab a hat. I don't know if they sell uh, shirts there, but they sell the hats. And like I said, the hat is just the perfect breathable type of hat. It, it bends. It's not those odd field hats that have the, the flat bill on the boxy top. I don't like them. I know a lot of other people like them. So anyway. That was great. That was the first time I've had a player on here. Usually I have GMs and, and owners and, uh, you know, other people that do podcasts. That's the first time I've had a player. So it's nice to get his perspective because, uh, yeah, they're the ones playing. They're the ones who are, are not getting paid. They are traveling 12 hours to play baseball, six hours. They are, you know, in a grind. But, you know, it's probably be, it'll probably be the most fun he'll have. You know, 10 years from now, he may not be able to do this. Definitely when he's my age. But, you know, when he's my age, he could be coaching. He could be teaching his son baseball. So, you know, those are the things you think of. So, Anthony, you got a new friend. We're going to – a new fan. We're going to keep tabs on you. And uh, hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, because sometimes he's come out a week or two after, maybe you're playing for one of those MLB draft teams. So uh, we'll uh, keep an eye out for you. And if I happen to find myself in one of those ballparks in the future, I'll stop by and say hello. So I want to thank everybody for checking out the ballpark hunter podcast, get yourself a ballpark hunter shirt. Hold on here. Let me get that focus. Look at this shirt. Look how does that look like baseball bunch type. He, Anthony wouldn't even know what the heck the baseball bunch is. It's got this distress kind of fabric. This is that soft material. You know, if you're a big guy like me, it, it fits you well. It doesn't make you, it's not tight with your gut hanging out. And uh, it's very comfortable. I wore these shirts every day in Texas. I had two other shirts like this. I wore these type of shirts in Texas because the other shirts I have are too damn hot. These are so comfortable. And they were perfect to wear in 103 degree heat because it's like as soon as you wake up in Texas in the summer, it's 103 degrees. It's at six o'clock and it's like, my God, does it have to be this hot? And it, it does. And it goes up to like 120 degrees by noon and then it dips down to 118. I'm just kidding. No, it's just very hot in Texas. And depending on where you are in Texas, you're going to get that dry heat. You're going to get that humidity. You're going to get that part where it's kind of a mix like, hey, I'm dry. Hey, I'm humid. And it's just not fun. So, and these guys are playing baseball in that weather. Oh, good. God bless you guys. You know, God bless you. Not, not, not the guys in, in, uh, with the Rangers and Astros with that AC going on. These guys are playing hard. They're busting their tail to make sure they can be seen. And uh, if you look at the Hormigas hat that I'm wearing, pretty good looking uh, baseball cap. And those are, I think they're $24.99 on the Pecos League website, plus shipping and handling, which gives you around uh, some between 30 and 33. Very good hat. Like I said, this is a, a very nice hat. It's breathable. It, it curves. Plus that Hormigas logo is just badass. I think it's badass. Maybe you may agree or not. So anyway, thank you guys. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, I want to thank guys like Ed Rivera, Paul Caputo, Gary Larson, Anna for the bucket list, uh, bucket heads, uh, podcast. Uh, she just celebrated one year, one year, one year, one year on the podcast. Uh, so she's got some great material out there. So if you like listening to, uh, hold on, I think I screwed that up. I want to make sure I got it right. I'm sorry, Anna baseball bucket heads. I just want to make sure I said that right. And I'm not editing this out. Yeah, that's Anna D. Tommaso. She is the founder of the Baseball Bucket List, which is a podcast, website, and uh, Twitter page. So Twitter handle is Baseball Bucket at Baseball Bucket. Uh, yeah, it's it's. She's got that nice calming voice. She has people of all all backgrounds. I think she had a former. All American Girls Baseball League player at 92 years old. It, that was amazing to listen to this woman talk about baseball at that time because she probably played at that ballpark in 1948. And, you know, she probably will come back and say, wow, it looks the same. 
But yeah, those are some great podcasts to listen to. Baseball with a Smile, that's uh, Paul Caputo. And of course, Ed Rivera has uh, the Dad Hat Chronicles. And, and Gary Larson likes to talk about baseball caps, which to me, this guy, I don't know what how much money this guy makes or how much he throws on caps. But my God, when I was, when I was taking my Texas trip, I think I bought three caps. They were all 30 bucks. I was like, Oh my God, I spent almost a hundred bucks on three baseball caps. These guys order like five caps a week. I don't know what they're doing, (laughs) but that's why we do what we do. So anyway, guys, this is Mark Viquez, the ballpark hunter. Check me out on Twitter at the ballpark hunter. Check out my YouTube page, which has now well over 1,000 subscribers. 1,000. 1,000 subscribers. I just need more hours. So not getting paid yet, guys, but we're so damn close. Been a great journey with you. And that's it, guys. We'll talk again. Take care. Thank you. Be safe and happy travels. And we'll see you at the ballpark.